Hello and welcome to this edition of the University of Northern Iowa Television, The Prowl. I'm Sean Dangler. And I'm Nathan Grieve. We here at The Prowl like to bring you the best sports related videos from the University of Northern Iowa and from the Cedar Valley. On this special edition of UNI TV, we take a look back at the best of the best videos right here at UNI. I'm Luke Hansen, and you're watching The Prowl. The passion. The purple. This is the Prowl. The sport of women's roller derby has taken the Cedar Valley by storm. The Prowl's own Sammy Castor has the report on these amazing athletes. Last time we looked at roller derby and some of the basics of the sport. Now let's get to know some of the players and their stories. My real name is Tracy Lake, and my derby name is After School Special. I'm a teacher by day, so when I was trying to decide on a name, I had no clue where to even start. So I asked my colleagues for some advice, gave them an offer of a free ticket if somebody came up with my name, and somebody came up with it, so I gave them a free ticket to come and watch. Uh, my sister actually played roller derby in Dubuque, and I went to watch her first bout, and they were playing my team. So I went home and checked them out just because I was curious, and uh, within two weeks I was buying gear, and within another two weeks I was trying out, and four and a half years later, here I am. Um, try something new. That's what I had to tell myself when I started Derby, is to tr just try something new. I've watched it once before, I had heard a little bit about it and I just thought it was going to be this rough and tumble kind of thing and it's so not that and it has this um, past stereotype that it's like a stage wrestling almost um, but it's definitely not that either. We are a serious athletic competing team and that's just kind of the stereotype that we try to get past is we practice, we strategize. Um, we watch game footage to prepare ourselves and we're hoping that people start to take us a little more seriously like an actual competitive sport. Angie Castor is another player I got a chance to speak to. She started a roller derby team in Cairo, Egypt, being the first team in that country. I asked Angie what the derby means to her. She says, Derby means empowerment in a community to me. I love the diversity. I grew up playing the sport with some similar age groups and mindness, but in derby, I'm competing against 18 to 40 year olds. From stay at home moms to tattoo artists to environmental scientists to judges, I realize it's not just a sport, it's a lifestyle changing, community building, comfort zone kicking experience. Um, what's really cool about roller derby is it brings together all of these women that normally would probably never cross paths. And some of my best friends are my teammates now, and they're people I probably never would have interacted with on the street because we're so different. Um, and roller derby that brings us all together and we start to find that we actually have so many things in common. Derby is not just a sport, it's a lifestyle. Um, there's women that are moms, they're single, we're all over the spectrum, I mean. It's just cool that it brings all of these different females together that all have strong personalities usually. <laughs> um, but we make it work so well. And it's, it's one of the best experiences ever. I, I love it. <laughs> Be sure to check out the Push Up Brothers at their next bout. This has been Samantha Castor reporting for The Prowl. Many records were broken during the men's indoor track season this year. Mike Lee brings us a story. The UNI men's track and field teams have shot off to a great start so far this season. With the indoor season coming to an end soon, 
The boys have already set the pace to success in the outdoor season with a large number of broken records and personal bests. You know, we got a lot of young people this year, and uh, you know, some of them, they, a lot of them stepping up real good coming in the conference, and uh, you know, I'm really happy with this team, you know, like, with everybody, everybody, I can see every day everybody working hard at what they do, and then, and especially bonding, you know what I'm saying, we've we been coming a lot closer together as a team, and that's a good thing. I mean, overall, I think the performance this year is, um, the team atmosphere in general is for us a great accomplishment. I've been, it's my fourth year, and uh, I've never really had an experience like that. It's, it's great, we're all supporting each other, so that's very different. And We'll see how many more people we might be able to qualify for nationals as for indoors right now. That's of course the first the first goal we have right now. Highlights of the indoor season include sophomore Brandon Carnes breaking the 60 meter school record with a time of 6.69 seconds and senior hurdler Sebastian Barth breaking the 60 meter hurdles record with a time of 7.72 seconds. Not only setting a school record, but sharing the fastest time in the country as well. These achievements only drive these track stars to compete even harder in the season. Oh, it's, it's something you always strive for. You see the records, you see the potential when you're healthy, and uh, that's just what's, what keeps me going. And I mean, I also have the teammates and the coaches that support me the whole way, and I just love it, keep, keep doing the sport. If I, if I do win a race, like, I still want to do better and run faster, so I'm, all, like, I'm always hungry to like, you know, run faster and reach success. On and off the track, these athletes say success drives the team relationship and they look forward to continuing the success with the outdoor season next month, where they look to throw, jump and run their way past even more records. Uh, I mean, we have so many things going. We have uh, team team dinners going on before meets um, in, the, in the separate uh, groups and we talk a lot more than we did before in and out of track and have more activities. Uh, I love it. It's a, it's a big family and that supports the, the performances. I feel like it's going to be a good season, so, um, you know, and the one and two, hopefully relay, so, and I'm looking forward to it, and I'm, I'm really hungry for outdoor. I mean, it goes fast. It's, uh, we start March, April, and, uh, I mean, get as many people as possible to the next rounds of regionals and nationals, and, uh, I mean, we want to have a great impact on the, on the, on the conference meets. Uh. Shout out to my whole team and the coaches. Uh, I'm really proud who I work with every day, and um, you know, I look for it for all of us to have a great season. Dancing has been around for centuries, and UNI does its part by having the UNI Orchestra. Riley Cosgrove has more on this organization. For many people, dancing is hardly ever seen as a sport, but after witnessing the UNI Orchestra's dance company rehearse for their annual gala last weekend, I know for one thing that that is not true. So Orcsis Dance Company is a um, dance company on campus. We're actually the oldest student organization at um, UNI. We study ballet and modern technique um, in class. You get credit for it. It's a really great opportunity. Um, we also do the outside rehearsals where we get to rehearse all of our pieces for our show. Our show has different pieces that um, range in style and variability. Um, we have tap dances, we have modern pieces, ballet pieces, and we also have IDT dance company that comes in and they do different types of folk dances. Um, we also have different styles that are contemporary. When I came to UNI as a freshman, I didn't have a whole lot of friends here. And then as soon as I joined Orchestist, instantly everybody was super welcoming and everybody just wants to be your friend and they just want to hang out with you. And that's where all of your friends come from. Within the company, we kind of create just like a family. We know everything about everyone, and we just love each other, and it's a great place to be, and I look forward to coming to class every day. With rigorous moves that make these numbers as special as they are, the dancers have to be prepared for injuries, and working out is a key tip to avoiding any injury. So basically, um, in Orcasis, what we do for workouts is going to be every day everyone's always going on runs and doing extra cardio but um, we also have every Monday and Wednesday we do two hours of um, warm-ups with um, modern style dance or ballet and that's just at the bar doing different types of workouts. When we do have injuries uh, you just want to be sure to pay attention to your own body and make sure what it's what it's telling you is what our director always says so if you have a muscle or a part of your body that is aching in a way or is hurting that it doesn't normally hurt in that way, 
uh, you just want to be mindful of that and maybe cut, pull back a little bit on what we're doing in class or, you know, ask Jason, our director, to say, hey, what should I be doing about this? Should I be stretching it a little bit more? Should I be icing it? Um, that kind of stuff. And we have a lot of uh, movement and exercise science majors in the company and they're really good at helping uh, guide the other members into the proper uh, prevention and care for any injuries. Reporting for The Prowl, I'm Riley Cosgrove. Next we go to our disciplined reporter Sean Dangler for a special behind the scenes tour of the famous Unidome. My name's Sean Dangler, I'm here for The Prowl. We're going to show you what this Unidome is all about. Alright, right here these pearl boards might not look like anything special, but actually they're what the turf sits on. While this just looks like glass to you guys, there's actually an office on the other side. Uh, fun fact, it's kind of like one of those interrogation scenes you see in a film. This door right here takes them to the McLeod Center, but right now we're staying in the dome. Then here is a nice little comfy area. Uh, this is where VIPs and important people come to sit during events or people who are running the events. This is like a show office at times. Ever wonder what it looks like to be in the entrance where the football team runs out of? Well, this is it. Minus this pop machine. Now it's time to go upstairs and, well, some of you might think this can't be moved. It can be. Oh. This is the ticket office of when you come into a nice event and want to uh, buy some tickets, this is where our lovely old uh, ticket takers get a sit. And as you can tell, it's uh, another office, I think it's of the tennis team, uh, but they get a spend in here, but as you can tell, these ceilings get really low, and it's almost like, you know, going to the Wizard of Oz or something with these dwarf doors. And you come in here, and voila, here's the lights, you hit this open, and if I want to turn on the uh, entrance lights, you know, power it up. There you go. It's a long walk to go around this dome, so, you know, like a human, I need some water. We come in here, we got a little more, a few amenities. We got some TVs up here. Uh, we also got, as you can tell, a fridge and a, I don't know, food thing. I don't know what those are called. But yes, more chairs. We've got this lovely, lovely panther. Like, look at that, that's probably fine mahogany. Don't quote me on that. I don't think that's mahogany. As you can tell, this view that you're uh, looking at is pretty dang high up. Uh, it's actually from the catwalk of the Unidome. Where we're standing, uh, you can actually get over to the scoreboard, uh, and when they need to fix it up, they'll use this to get over there. Um, yeah, but it's really high up, and the thing is, I don't like to be this high, and that's why I'm standing kind of near the entrance to this, because I'm so afraid of heights. It goes on for quite a bit, actually. Uh, here we got a nice fridge that they can uh, put their drinks in. Uh, let's see if we got anything in here. Oh, that's locked. Uh, that's my bad. This is the replay booth. So you know whenever they uh, like, we gotta call up to the booth and let you know what's happening. This is actually where they're at. I'm not even gonna try to see if I have a key for this. Oh wait, I don't because it's open. So if you've ever wondered during a football game how, where the cameras are that they're looking down, this is the place they sit on. Obviously the student sections would be right down in front of these cameras. <sighs> For the Prowl, I'm Sean Dangler. We've seen them on the court. Now see where they relax as Austin Hansen and Charnay Lamar take a look at the women's basketball locker room. What's up guys, uh, I'm Nay point guard for the women's basketball team and uh, this is our crib locker room style come on in come on in this is it right here is our champion wall these are people that donated to make this place look great we really appreciate every single one of these people that are on this wall um, I don't even know how many is on there but those people are pretty cool that's all I'm saying uh, here's our TV of accomplishments from the game it's nice to see our face up there. That's me right there. First, let me take you to our locker room. This is a cool space. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyways, this is Jen. Um, just doing the basketball thing of showering after a workout. Um, but this is our space. This is our locker room. If you come on closer, this is my locker room here. 
Lamar with the big paw print. Toughness wins games. Toughness wins games right there. Here's our history wall where we take a lot of pride in, just show off our, our cute players that have played here um, at UNI for in the past years. And look at here. Look at this pretty girl right there. Oh my gosh. All right, let's go to the kitchen. This is my favorite place, Unlimited Snacks. Thanks, NCAA. Oh, and uh, there's Jen again, eating all the snacks, huh? Yeah. Aren't they delicious? Let's go into the fridge. Yum! Eat up, everyone. Plenty for everyone. Plenty for everyone. Our video room, guys, this is where the, where the magic happens. This is where we play video games. Most importantly, this is where we watch film for um, teams are like our opponents and things like that and uh, here's our comfy chairs ah oh, these things are wonderful they're not recliner but they're perfect and then watch this thing we know we know and there's Jen again playing 2k I think NBA 2k all right let's let's leave Jen in here to win her basketball game her virtual basketball game to the right here is our study area we take great pride in this area um, this is where our GPA accomplishments are. We're cool, we look good, and I guess we're smart too. So what more can you ask for? And here, guys, is our accomplishment wall. I mean, we have scholar athletes, we have our team accomplishment and individual accomplishments. Although individual accomplishments aren't what we strive for, we always want to recognize great players. I guess such as Jen Keitel. You betcha. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go to our lounge area. This is where we just absolutely chill. See these chairs here? These are the exclusive chairs. These are leather made, I mean like pure leather. They're like essentially gold. Only the, the only five in the world here. You just sit, you just sit down and kind of just prop your feet up. All right guys, one more thing I want to show you and this is our accomplishments as well. I mean we put our, our big time trophies for player of the year and their names such as Jackie Kalen, you know, the, the face of the UNI franchise and then we got Coach Warren and her Coach of the Year award here. And then we got our championship award from Valley Conference and, and things like that. But that's our crib. Thanks for coming, guys. Now get out. Leave before I call security. Coach Warren! <laughs> With such great weather, it's a perfect time of the year to spend a day out on the golf course. Prowl reporter Drew Hayes sat down in an interview with golfer Michael Foley to get the inside scoop on the UNI men's golf team. I'm Michael Foley. I'm a junior uh, marketing and digital advertising major, and I'm on the UNI men's golf team. Well, I came to UNI just by um, being recruited to, to play golf here, obviously. Both of my parents uh, went to school here. My dad played golf as well, so I, I'm kind of a legacy. and. Uh, that was definitely a, a big kicker for me to, to come and play here. Um, I, uh, I love the school. Campus is, is great. Obviously, it's a great business school, and um, I really like uh, our coach a lot. So, um, Being on the team is awesome. You know, anytime you can uh, play golf during the week, it's great. Uh, we play 18 holes on Monday and Tuesday. Wednesdays are our days off, and then Thursdays and Fridays we have team practices. Um, Thursdays, we, we usually do a two-hour practice session. We start off by putting and with uh, some short game work. And then Fridays are generally on our own, so we can go out and do whatever we feel like uh, we need to work on. And, um, you know, obviously we all spend more time out there than what uh, is asked of us because we all want to be the best we can be. My favorite memory of being on the team... Um, Last year, I, uh, I traveled to an event and uh, we, uh, we got done with the tournament and we were in the van on the way back and just the camaraderie and all the, you know, the laughs and uh, the, the shared stories of good shots and bad shots on the course that day. That's definitely my favorite memory. That's the, uh, the best part about being on a uh, golf team, I think, college, high school or Otherwise, it's just the uh, camaraderie after the rounds when uh, everybody's done and all the putts are made. So, My dad's a golf instructor, so I've been literally playing golf since I was in diapers. Um, he, uh, he put a club in my hand at, um, gosh, I was months old. My baby pictures were taken with a golf ball. 
so I've been I've been playing golf for a really long time and uh you know I I thank him every day for introducing me to the sport he never forced me to play I was always just encouraged to play and uh it was a great way to spend time with him you know I think that there are so many simul similarities between the game of golf and life uh golf doesn't owe you anything life doesn't owe you anything uh but there definitely is karma involved you know for every bad break you get on the golf course every lipped out putt i think you know you get a uh, you know you get a good kick or uh you know lip one in um but what golf has taught me about life was to just never give up um you know you can be nice and you can be a gentleman um that's what you should be but at the end of the day you still have to be steely you still need to you know have so much uh diligence and and um always just keep pushing and keep pushing to get better every day from lords and ladies to freshmen and sophomores this next sport encompasses both sides of the social spectrum ballroom dancing is a sport for people of all ages and backgrounds it does not require any special skills or dance ability this week i talked to you and i's ballroom swing club to learn a little bit more about what they do so uh, ballroom itself is a pretty big label, so lots of stuff fits under that. We also do swing, that would be the other, the other big thing that uh, sort of exists on its own. Within that we do uh, east coast swing, west coast swing, we do some triple time, and then we do some of the, some of the, other, uh, some of the other smaller dances as well. We do a little bit of salsa, we do some polka, um, anything with a partner that has sort of a, that has sort of a history and a, and a, yeah, a social component. We're social. We think it's really important to get to know people, um, both community and um, student body. But we also just have social dancing, a competitive team, and a performance team. So we do a little bit of everything. Yeah, right behind me is social, and it's being taught by one of our student teachers. So later tonight we have a competitive lesson, and on Sundays is our performance team. We meet on Tuesdays for a social lesson at 6 o'clock, and then we'll follow it at 7 with our competitive lesson. And then on Thursdays we meet at 8 o'clock for a social lesson and a competitive lesson at 7 again. Those social lessons at 6 on Tuesdays and 8 on Thursdays are open to anyone in the public or any students. And then on Monday nights we just started doing a West Coast series at 8 o'clock, which is open to anyone. I then talked to a few other club members to understand why they initially joined this club. The vast majority of my friends are in ballroom, and, uh, so this is really where I like make new friendships, new connections. Um, uh, it's a great place for me to de-stress, uh, though sometimes it can be stressful since I'm in leadership positions. But, uh, but even the leadership stuff, like I feel like I've grown as a leader in, like, in organizations through being involved in ballroom. It's definitely an interesting club because it's something that like, you wouldn't originally just be like, oh yeah, every campus has one of those. But it's something that I joined because it's a lifelong skill. So it's something that maybe you know, a lot of people aren't going to know how to do, but it's something that even if I, if I never went again after today, I would still have more than I came with, and I would still have something I can do for the rest of my life. Uh, you know, it doesn't hurt that you know, the ladies kind of like it when you can just show them how to ballroom dance. And so there's a lot you can take away. So this club, to me, is just really that, that lifelong skill. That's something I can do as leisure um, for fun and uh, even as a competitive thing. For more information, you can contact UNI's Ballroom Swing Club at uniballroom.swing at gmail.com. For UNI's The Prowl, I'm Avon Hogerson. We go to our own Tommy Zittergruen, who takes us back to the Missouri Valley Conference Indoor Track and Field Championships held here at our very own Unidome. really happy with the women this indoor season. They, um, from the very beginning, even in the fall, they just had a terrific mindset. They made up their mind they want to be good and, and they, they become a very close team, very supportive of each other um, and the results were obvious right away. As soon as we started the indoor season, they started breaking records. Every kid is hitting big, big PRs and you could just see, okay, this is a special group. Uh, 
and uh, they just started feeding off each other's positive energy and the momentum just kept building and, and, and now shoot they broke a bunch of records um, and I think they're poised to have a really really good meet this weekend. Um, I think heading into the outdoor season typically if you're good indoors you can be good outdoors and then uh, we have some uh, javelin throwers that don't get to compete indoors they'll get to compete outdoors and they're very talented and hungry so I think this is, is really going to be a terrific indoor and outdoor season and we're going to look back on 2015 it's, it's really one of the best uh, seasons the women have had in a very long time just a special group of kids so this year i just uh, brought some experience to the team i tried to be a resource for my teammates um, just being out it helped me uh, not only get a perspective on everything but also just to kind of be there for everyone and help coach a little bit here and there since i have a lot of experience so that's kind of what i brought being injured this year chaley rath has, has really stepped up her game this year she's a sophomore and um, she's having a great meet so far, has a couple PRs on the day, um, and she'll be, she's the favorite now in the high jump, which will be tomorrow. Uh, Rachel Pate, she's also doing great, um, and our freshman, uh, Lauren Frederick, she's on PR pace. So, um, so far, so good. Everybody looks like they, they've got their minds right, and, um, and I'm excited. I, I'm going to enjoy watching them. This semester saw the rise of a new show, and its name is The Prowl. By now, you've probably figured out that you are watching The Prowl, but what you don't have figured out is just what The Prowl is. Truth is, we're still trying to figure that out too. What we can tell you is that this show is the product of Eric Braley's sports journalism class, which is being offered for the first time in UNI history. The class UNI Sports TV Journalism had never been offered before here at the University of Northern Iowa, and this is something that I'm definitely passionate about, being an alum of the UNI Electronic Media major and getting my start in sports broadcasting here at UNI. And there's so many talented students here at UNI that, that need the experience and a chance to really um, practice and get valuable hands-on experience. So this class is a perfect opportunity for them to put together a fun, entertaining sports program that is great for the university and the community. It's reality TV at its finest. You never know what student athlete, what professional athletes going to have a good game. You don't know what team's going to win. So following sports as a broadcaster, uh, as a producer of a TV show, it's the next best thing from actually being on the field or on the court. We decided early on that there should be a heavy emphasis within the team of going beyond what most people think a sports show can do. Sure, we've got football, basketball, wrestling. We'll tell you all about the sports and shine a spotlight on some of the athletes who compete on them. But we also wanted to highlight some of the things that people don't know much about. Things like fencing club, or swimming, or chess club. We're excited about anything that people do whether it's for fun or for fierce competition. The Prowl team is excited to be on the forefront of this new chapter in UNI TV's history. Uh, I like the brainstorming aspect. I like having a show that's from nothing, like starting from nothing, and then we build a show, and we get to throw out ideas of what we want and what we would like to see and what we wouldn't like to see. And uh, we get, yeah, we get to create a show, basically, which that you don't ever get to do that with. Traditional news shows, they're already there and you fall into the position, but this, you are, you are creating as you're, you're discovering it as you create it. And that's really interesting, I feel. I'm really excited just because it is new and I'm excited just to like go out there and explore the different like activities that are out there so that people are getting involved in. I mean, obviously this is mostly sports based, but I mean, there are so many different sports that people don't know about. like. There's like is chess a sport, fencing, uh, roller derby. Like people don't know about these kind of unique and obscure sports. So it's going to be interesting to kind of be able to go deeper into yeah, those and not only oh, yeah, inform the people yeah. for the show what's happening in those like sports, but also informing our viewers. We've already made some big strides in our short history. We've started a social media campaign on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. The athletes, as well as some other special guests that we've reached out to, have been really excited to be involved. UNI TV is proud to present the Prowl to our viewers, and we hope that you enjoyed this and all our future broadcasts. Thank you for tuning in to another great edition of the University of Northern Iowa Television, The Prowl. I'm Sean Dangler. And I'm Nathan Grieve. We hope you've enjoyed our broadcast. 
Be sure to check out some of our previous shows by going to YouTube and searching for University of Northern Iowa TV, The Prowl. Also be sure to follow our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And that's all for the last edition of UNI TV, The Prowl. I'm Luke Hansen, and thank you, UNI, for watching.